Hi everybody and welcome back. So I will start as usual with a uh, picture on my screen of where we will be working today. So still working on these pillars here and uh, yeah working my way across kind of working more in a bit of a vertical direction just because that's the way the colors are going so let me see let's see if I'm going in the right place okay it's getting a little confused as to where I was because for me it has been uh 10 days since I last stitched so I st I made some videos ahead of time for you guys so that there would be uh uploads while I was away my regular schedule but uh yeah, I was away on holiday for uh, nine days. So we got back yesterday and I spent the morning doing all that cleanup and three loads of laundry and uh, all that kind of stuff. So now I finally get a chance to sit down and stitch. I didn't get to do any stitching on my holiday because it's not easily portable. And... Um, it's in a car and I can't be looking at what I'm doing. I get motion sick really easily. So, so yeah, I brought knitting instead to work on. So I got almost four of my quilt squares. I call them quilt squares because it kind of uses an old quilt program. So, uh, or pattern kind of looks similar. I adapted it. So, uh, yeah, it's knitted, but it looks like a quilt, like a pinwheel quilt. So I was working on that and I got almost four of them done while I was away. So pretty happy with that. Although the bulk of my knitting I actually did while we were visiting and not while I was, not while we were driving. Ooh. But yeah, it was a pretty good trip. Got to see, um, a lot of people. I got to see my sister for the in person for the first time in six years because the last time we went was in 2019 and they happened to be camping at the same time so we missed each other. And, um, and then uh, of course as we all went through the pandemic hit and that meant no travel for a while. And yeah we took precautions, you know, we wore masks in public places. And when we went on the ferry, we stayed in the truck because um, most people were walking around without masks. So we decided it was just safer to, to stay in a vehicle for the couple of hours it took. So but yeah, we got to go see my grandma. My son got to visit his great grandma. So it's nice because yeah, she's 89. So, you know, we don't know how much longer she'll be with us so it was really nice to see her she is yeah um very active still she goes for walks every day sometimes two even though you know she had two hip replacements but uh said yeah I i'm gonna strive to be active like that when i'm her age <laughs> yeah. but it was really lovely to see her it's been a while And then, uh, yeah, I said, I, maybe I didn't get my steps in when we were um, driving, but I sure got them in while we were there because we went hiking a bit and I wore out my shoes. <laughs> they were kind of on their last legs and uh, yeah, I had to buy new ones when I got home because they were separating from the soles. So yeah, and we got to stay with my husband's parents for a bit, see them because again, we haven't seen them for a while either. And, uh, yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, my sister's place, they ended up with a bear king on their property <laughs> right when we were leaving. Just before we left, they, um, she was using a smoker. And I think he smelled it. And their, uh, their property kind of goes, ends up right on the woods. So, yeah, the bear came in the yard, little black bear, kind of looking around of, oh, do you guys have food for me? And then, yeah, they scared him off because, you know. Don't want him around, especially with the young kids there, so. But yeah, as, as always, the it wasn't long enough. 
And then my sister and I, we totally forgot about taking any pictures because we were too busy visiting. And yeah, after I left, she said, oh, we didn't take any pictures. Oh, shoot, you're right. So, yeah. Because the last time we saw them was like 2018, I think. And, um, yeah, the first thing I did when we saw each other is we took a selfie of the two of us because I knew I'd forget later. And then this time I forgot. I took a couple pictures of the kids, but I totally forgot to take any of the adults. So, <laughs> oh dear. Hmm. I have to remember next time. And I totally remembered, you know, I packed, um, jam and juice that I made to give to them. And I remembered to do that and, uh, and my cousin, when I'd visited her earlier, had sent me with something to give to her. And I remembered to give her that, but yeah, forgot about pictures. I'm bad about taking pictures. I think I'm still stuck in the, you know, when I was a kid, we were still using film. And, you know, it costs money, and then it also costs money to get them developed. So you didn't waste film, you know? You only took pictures of the really important stuff. And it's like, I guess, part of my brain is still wired for that, even though... We have digital now, and smartphones can hold, you know, thousands of pictures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was funny, because um, one of my friends, her dad was the one who's always taking pictures, and, you know, the grandkids would get annoyed and stuff. But it's like, no, it's good there's somebody who's always uh, taking pictures. You'll, you'll appreciate that years later. You have uh, photos to look back on remember yeah so that's my advice for you today don't forget to take some pictures and they often say make sure you get yourself in some of them too if you're the one who's taking all the pictures make sure somebody takes some pictures of you so there's some memories of you you know for later because yeah there was um i remember reading a blog post by some lady saying She's so sad because her mom was always the one taking the pictures and her mom didn't like having her, pic her picture taken. So after she passed away, she had almost no pictures of her mother. That made it even harder. It's like, yeah, I can see that. Okay, what do I want to do here? So yeah, I missed my stitching. So I'm guessing my next um, monthly update, I'm going to have less done because uh, I missed nine days of stitching. So almost a third in the month, right? So, yeah, it's probably like four or five thousand stitches that I, less than I will usually do. So we'll see what that does to my estimates of when I'll be finished. So I was hoping by the end of this year for this project. We shall see. Yeah, that drive's always stressful, and there's always some drivers who just take stupid risks. And this was no exception. People uh, passing where it wasn't safe, and especially when there was signs saying, you know, the next passing lane is in two kilometers, but I guess people just can't wait that long. <laughs> They're so impatient. Yeah, and we had a on the way home, came around a corner and a guy was just pulling back into the other lane for passing the other way. Oh, yeah, my husband was not happy. See, I always say, I, I don't worry about his driving. He's a, he's a good driver. It's the other people out there who take, you know, big risks. And you might end up being the one paying the price. And people always seem to, they don't pass where there's a good section to pass, it's like they realize the passing lane is ending and then they try to do it then. Ugh. It's like you should have done it two minutes ago when it was safer. I'm not trying to squeeze in now, boy. Man, his truck has this feature now. If it senses you're too close to the vehicle ahead of you, it, um, it uh, slows you down automatically. Engine brakes a bit, but also um, when somebody stopped in front of us, suddenly it beeped. And so when my husband touched the brakes, it like slammed on the brakes. And I was thinking, what the heck? He doesn't usually slap on the brakes, you know? 
unless he absolutely has to. And he said, no, it's because when that safety feature, when that happens, it actually makes the brakes more sensitive. So he just pressed it halfway and it reacted as if he put his foot to the floor. So, yeah. He said, I'm not sure I like that so much, but I mean, we didn't end up with an accident. So I suppose it worked, right? Yeah. And uh, we found out, even though that is a big full-size truck, it was um, better on fuel than we thought it would be. Yeah, we expected to pay a lot more for gas than we actually did, thankfully. So, always glad when it works out that way, right? <laughs> yeah. Just... Oh. Yeah, we had the days we were traveling were really hot, like you know, 30 Celsius, which is oh, I can't remember Fahrenheit, like 90. And uh, but we were in the truck with the AC, so we didn't really notice it that much. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. It, we wouldn't realize how hot it was till we'd step out for a bathroom break, and it was like yeah, the like opening an oven door, wave of heat hit me in the face. Okay, yeah, we noticed things have changed a lot, um, probably partly due to uh, the pandemic because there were quite a lot of restaurants that we used to go to that were closed down, especially at um, gas stations. You know, we usually, that was a place that we would stop, everybody used the bathroom, we'd gas up, we'd have lunch or whatever. And yeah, a lot of them were closed and I husband was saying I guess they were barely scraping by and so the pandemic was just too much for them put them out of business yes sad to see okay make sure I again I am in the right place yeah it's been a while bit since I stitched but I'm not really out of practice I guess <laughs> Yeah, and then on, we were traveling home on the way back on Sunday, and it was like nothing was open. So, oh, we'll stop at this diner for breakfast. Oh, it's not open for another hour, you know. Uh, we tried to stop it at a and and they only had two employees there, so there was only drive through We wanted to uh, wanted to sit down, you know, not in the truck. <laughs> so we spend, it's a 15-hour, 15 15-hour 15 each way drive, so yeah. That last two, three hours is the hardest. I always find. Yeah. But we tried splitting it up before and we found you were still just as tired by the time you got there and I mean, because at the halfway point, you kind of could go two-thirds kind of thing, but there isn't a way or anywhere to stop two-thirds. And plus, if you're going to go two-thirds of the way, it's kind of like at that point almost like you might as well just just keep going. So, yeah, we did it once, but it was... Uh, the hotel was expensive because we don't have a trailer. And, um, well, people were freaking loud. They were, like, having a party in the parking lot or something and yelling and throwing beer bottles around and so it wasn't restful or anything yeah and like we called up and said you know are you guys gonna do anything about that and they're like well you deal with it it's like well it, your hotel your hotel grounds why should we be dealing with it the should be doing your job for you so yeah it wasn't wasn't good okay let me just make sure i am in the right spot yes right there, okay. Yes, I have so many of the same, similar colors that it's uh, harder to tell where we are sometimes. Yeah, oh, pardon me. Still tired from that trip back. <laughs> yeah, we didn't see a lot of wildlife. 
this year. Most years we don't, even going through Jasper National Park. They make you slow down, sometimes even to uh, 70 kilometers in some places because of the wildlife. But uh, we didn't see much. One year we had, there was mountain goats all over the, the highway and they weren't scared of you at all. So we had to wait for them to move or till, you know, some park rangers came and shooed them off the road. Uh, we saw an elk one time. Uh, but uh, this year we had um, a mama black bear and a cub ran across the street and a deer at one point, but that was about it, not very much. We said maybe it's different migration, but we usually travel at the same time of the year, so yeah, I don't know. I guess we just got lucky or unlucky, depending on how you want to look at it. Okay. It's kind of sad though because on the way home I was knitting and I realized that one of the balls of what I thought was white yarn was actually cream so yeah I couldn't knit anymore because it wasn't there wasn't any point I was gonna have to pull that out and I didn't have any more white left mm -hmm. because I left my big one pound ball of white yarn at home because I mean it was huge <laughs> wasn't really conducive to traveling so I had a second knitting project but it was in my suitcase in the back of the truck. It just, yeah, wasn't really practical to try and get it. So yeah, I just had to do without <laughs> for the last four or five hours of the trip. So, hmm. Oh dear. Oh, pardon me. It's gonna take me a few days to catch up, I think. It's definitely nice to be back in my own bed, though. You always sleep a little better in your own bed, right? Yeah, we bring our pillows with us because uh, my neck is pretty sensitive. And uh, especially if the pillows are too fat, oh, I'm going to get pinched nerves. So, yeah. Yeah, my mother-in-law was kind of surprised. You brought your own pillow? But I said, yeah. Ounce of prevention, I'd rather sleep with my own pillow and not to... Uh, not mess up my neck because that's really painful. <laughs> okay, let's see if I have to reset. This is my last needle off my needle minder, so I may have to. I didn't when I started this session. I had quite a lot of live, live needles on threads, so we shall see. Oops, there we go. nodding up on the back there. Yeah, I have to say too, I, I don't miss the traffic where we used to live. I'd forgotten kind of how stressful it is. So yeah, the roads are definitely narrower because there's less space than out here on the prairie. So yeah, yeah, their streets are in better condition because they don't have as much of a, um, you know, temperature range. So yeah, the okay. problem is for us, you kind of can't really get any that will um, withstand both plus 40 and minus 40. At some point it's gonna buckle. So yeah, their roads are definitely in better condition, but yeah, they're narrower and drivers are a lot more aggressive. And I said, yeah, there was a reason why I never got my license when we lived there. 
I learned late and yeah. And then when I was in the middle of learning, we got into a bad accident, which my husband was driving, but it wasn't his fault. The other guy was like street racing or something and came flying around the corner way too much speed and he couldn't control it. So yeah, he hit us and then that freaked me out for a while. <laughs> Every time I tried to think about getting behind the wheel, I'd start panicking, so... Yeah, and then when we came out here and I saw, yeah, it's, uh... There's more space, the roads are wider, and people aren't in as quite as much of a hurry, so... Yeah, I was able to get my license out here, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was glad I um, cleaned my house before we left, so I didn't have that to deal with. I usually clean on Saturdays, and I, uh, well, we left early in the morning, like 5 a.m. on the Saturday, so I cleaned on the Friday instead so that we could come home to a clean house and only have to deal with the uh, holiday stuff. So, yeah, thanks, past me. That was a good decision. carry it up there. I was going to see if there was another thread sort of coming down that way. If that was closer, I would end this one off. But since there isn't, I'm going to carry it over there. Mm -hmm. nope. Oh, goodness. My whole project is sh shifting here. <laughs> Hopefully the angle didn't change too much for you on the camera there. Ah, oh, that fuzzy is still coming up. Go back. There we are. Yeah, so the last time we went to BC, they were actually working on expanding the worst section of the highway and putting in passing lanes. They can't really make extra lanes. They There's ravines on either side and it's just, there's no way to do it, but there are places that are slightly wider than others so then they can put at least a passing lane. People are less likely to make as many dangerous risks. Of course, there's always somebody who's a, uh, Impatient enough to, uh, yeah, to do reckless moves, but you know, those people were a little, little better. And then, yeah, there was a lot of road work on the way back because that was in the, um, in the Sumas Mountain area where there was a huge washout last year, major rainstorm and uh, it washed out lots of sections of the highway. Bridges were down and everything, so yeah, they are still busy rebuilding that. Okay, I'm going to reset here. Can do here. There we go. Yeah, and then we went to um, it was an amusement, little amusement park we used to go to when we were dating, my husband and I. And yeah, it was majorly downsized because they were right at that Sumas Mountain Pass, and uh, yeah, so there was no um, mini golf because it had all been in the basement. 
and outside and it all got completely flooded. So they said, yeah, they're planning to open it next, next spring, but of course that doesn't do much for us at the time. The go-karts were open, so we did that. That was fun. Yeah, I didn't know before that whole whole flooding thing happened was that they said that whole area where Abbotsford and Chilliwack and all that is actually used to be a lake, Sumas Lake, and they um, they drained it and built there. And then when they had the huge, just way too much rain, the pumps, the pumping stations couldn't handle it. And, uh, and they failed and then ev everything flooded because there was all that rain plus the water that they're normally having to pump out to keep it dry was also not getting pumped out so yeah it was a uh, yeah it was quite a disaster um I remember seeing there were um videos and pictures of people in um in little boats dragging cows behind them to get them out of the flooding poor things must have been scary for them yeah, and the Fraser River is still higher than usual, even all this time later, you know, months later. Yeah, because when we went over the bridge, we looked down and you could sort of see where all the benches and stuff were sort of peeking up out of the water, because normally the, you know, the river was lower, and then you would sit on the benches, but yeah, they were all flooded, so. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, a lot of people lost homes. It was not good. My in-laws were really lucky because they're on a bit of a hill. So they escaped the worst of it. But yeah, they said they were cut off from everything for a few days. Everything was completely flooded. But, you know, they're counting their blessings because, uh, yeah, their, their house was fine. So it could have been much, much worse for them. It was much worse for a lot of poor people. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah, I think I wouldn't want to own waterfront property because of that, you know, it's beautiful, but then, yeah, if it floods, you are in trouble and a lot of places won't even insure for flooding now because they can't afford to. There'd be way too many claims after something like this happens, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember seeing people's homes like up in the high, high mountains and some of them you couldn't get insurance because of the uh, forest fires was too much of a risk to, um, yeah, for the insurance companies to be willing to insure you for fire. So, yeah, I think I would be way too stressed out. So this color here. Okay. I'm actually just going to do one more there. Yeah. I'm going to kind of split that color up a bit. different threads as I often do. Furthest over to the left first. Yeah. Okay, and then there we go. Mm 
Man, our guinea pig is still alive. <laughs> I was a little worried because, like I've said, she's really old. But we left her with some friends who also have piggies, so she got to, uh, yeah, she got to uh, visit some other piggies, which was nice for her. Yeah, I was saying to her, did you miss me? Because I missed you. And she was purring a lot, so I think she did. <laughs> got into town a bit late last night so we left her for one more night with our friends rather than disturb them to come pick her up so yeah okay so this just should probably be the last one I'm gonna get out of this thread oh. <laughs> no actually I think I can get these two. Yeah, I'm gonna unthread that for now though because I'm probably gonna carry along just this bit here. Yeah, that's just sort of what makes sense to me at the moment. So, so yeah, as the colors are going vertical, I'm just kind of following them downwards. And then once I get past the pillar, I'll go back to uh, back to more diagonal again. Yeah, I uh, finished that uh, sweater I was making for my mother-in-law. She totally forgotten about it. <laughs> she bought the yarn, so and uh, yeah, it fit perfectly. So woohoo! I was happy about that because I was a little nervous that the neckline might be a bit too big, but she's got wider shoulders than me, so. Yeah, and so I had a little bit of yarn left, and I, I brought along my circular needles in case I needed to pick up stitches along the uh, neckline and tighten it up a little bit. But, yeah, no, she said it fit perfectly. So, yeah, I was very happy about that. Okay, I may actually end up doing something out of order at this point. Mm-hmm. We shall see. Yeah. Don't usually do that, but sometimes, sometimes I decide it's just too much to work around it. So sometimes I will break my guidelines. As Needlebug says, their only rules are the ones you make for yourself. So go ahead and break them when it suits you. Okay. <laughs> okay, these, I think these will be the last two I get out of this thread. Yeah, there are some people who they never deviate from there, where they decide their lines are going to be, but I am not that disciplined. So yeah, this one is kind of out of line, but if I were to fill in everything else, I'd have to go like way, way back up, almost to the very top. So, at this point, I'm going to go out of order. 
is just not worth it to me to avoid it. So yes, some, one bit will get closed in when I get to here, but oh well. I'm not gonna be that finicky about it. <laughs> So yeah, while we were away, at one point, we went to the zoo and uh, we looked at the weather forecast and it was saying rain, but it was saying like one to three millimeters, which is, you know, nothing, just a little sprinkle. Yeah, it was not a little sprinkle. <laughs> yeah, we got soaked. There's a little, um, little train they have that you can go on a ride around, around the uh, zoo. Oh, I marked that as parked in a different spot. It doesn't matter. These are both the same color, so I actually parked it in the top one. Anyway, so yeah, they have a little tour. You go in the zoo and the uh, the conductor, you know, gives you a talk about everything as you go through it. And halfway through it started raining and my, uh, my mother-in-law and my son were sitting in the very front, unfortunately, and the bonnet ended right there. The rain bonnet. And so yeah, it was... The rain was coming in on their knees and soaking their legs. So I said, oh, we should have sat one one back. Oh, dear. Yeah, they had to downsize the zoo a bit because they said they had a petting zoo section for a while. But uh, that was gone. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing due to COVID because they had it before that. And then, yeah. They had to downsize and some of their animals had to go to other bigger zoos because uh yeah they got hit by it and they had to downsize in order to be able to keep from closing completely so yeah and at that zoo actually they had a dinosaur section with uh, animatronic uh dinosaurs so that was quite fun they even blink and everything and yeah they roar and move around because they're made of that like soft rubber yeah yeah so my son quite enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, so my husband still has some days off work. He's actually taking a nap right now. <laughs> well, he does all the driving. I don't drive that truck. It's not, it's too big for me. And it's a company truck, so I'm not really, you know on the insurance to drive it. So my husband prefers to drive anyway. I drove one time we were traveling and I drove through part of it, but uh, my husband doesn't like being a passenger, <laughs> I think. Like he's not a bad backseat driver or anything, but it's just uncomfortable for him. And I really don't, I like the freedom of being able to drive, but I don't actually like driving. It makes me really anxious. So yeah, we only did that the one time and now he just drives. Okay. It's really twisty. It's windy out there, but nice blue sky. Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to join another thread, a shorter one, if I have it. Maybe I don't. Oh well. That was okay. Yeah, because again, I don't want to go all the way up to the top to carry on downwards, so. And I could do another one out of order, but I don't feel like that either, so. <laughs> oh, 
Although I say that, but I'm actually probably going to do this one. Yeah, so I'm breaking my guidelines a bit here. So even though that is going to close in some stuff here, I am going to do it anyway. I'm going to be a rebel. <laughs> okay, so that... Don't be afraid to make your method work for you rather than you tying yourself into knots trying to work for the method, right? This should be fun, as I've said many times before. This is a hobby. It should be fun. <laughs> Kind of almost got a sore throat because I, it was my turn to play music on the way home and of course I can't help but sing along with the songs I like so I sang for a lot of hours yesterday oh dear oh I split that purple one it came up kind of between those two threads so let's try that again otherwise it's gonna look kind of weird I might end up going the other way, so going from the bottom. Yeah, I cannot seem to come between, or I'm not coming between them. Okay, there we go. As long as I hold that taut, it seems to be oh. hopefully staying nice and neat. Oh dear. Okay, there we go. I was needed to move my needle further down my thread. Otherwise I end up with four strands. <laughs> that is not what I want. Okay. Carrying on. Look at that, over a hundred. Woohoo. Yeah, we are at 74 and a half percent. So we are closing in on that three quarter mark. That'll be exciting. Probably that won't be for another couple of days. So that's like a thousand stitches. So yeah, that's gonna take a few more days of work. See how much, yeah, because working in this section is getting about six, seven hundred a day. Because there's fewer colors, fewer color changes, so it goes a bit faster, but we will see. This is time to be ended off.
Checking that was actually ends on the back and not a tangle. Oops, that would have been not so good. Oh, oh my, pardon me. Mm. up a bit, work my way back down, and it would end up with almost a straight line all the way down here. I got one sticking out and one <laughs> little recess in. Ugh. Just barely managed to pull that out with the needle still attached. Uh, oh, I spoke too soon. I then unthreaded it when I pulled it to the other side. Oh. Silly me. leave that part there and just see what I shall do. Okay. Mm. Oh, pardon me. Oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, I think I take it for granted how quiet my street is because uh yeah staying at my husband's parents place definitely not so much they're near one of a bigger streets and boy people love to go racing down it gosh there was some jerk like every night at, like you know one in the morning he's revving his super loud engine that he like you know made louder with a bigger exhaust it's like ugh. Thanks a lot, you jerk. <laughs> and it was hot, so we had the window open too. So yeah, oh, the earplugs, I definitely heard them. <sighs> uh. <sighs> yeah, and my uh, in-laws don't have central air conditioning. They just had a couple of little units that, yeah, there were a couple of days that were really hot, over 30. Celsius and uh, yeah, just could not keep up. <sighs> I guess it was a good thing I was, I was so tired from such a long drive, I fell asleep anyway. <laughs> yeah, and then we forgot it was a long weekend. 
when we were going to um, visit my grandma on Vancouver Island, so all the ferries were booked because we, we didn't think to um, book it ahead of time. And uh, so we managed to book a 5... 15 or something on the way over because I was the only one available so we had to get up mega early because <laughs> you know hour and a bit away from the ferry terminal and you have to arrive like an hour ahead of time if you're going to make your reservation because uh we were taking the truck over if you go on as a foot passenger then as long as you show up you know before before they take off you're fine but yeah if you want to take a vehicle over then you need to, uh, especially for a long week weekend, you don't want to count on luck or you could be waiting at the ferry terminal for six hours because there's sort of one every two and a half to three hours. So, yeah, it's a long wait. Because they let um, up to 40% of the um, vehicle spots can be reserved. Then the rest is for when first come, first serve. But you can't really count on that, right? So, yeah. And even though we had a reservation, we were one of the very last vehicles that made it uh, on there. I think there was one guy behind us. That was it. So, yeah. Yeah, and then we just stayed down there and kind of rested in the car because it was a, such an early start and somebody's car alarm kept going off for the first half hour so that was irritating because <laughs> the uh, vibration of the uh, the ferry and the guy's alarm was too sensitive so it kept going off yeah and it's like I mean I guess people just you know they alarm it out of habit it's like it's not like somebody's going to be able to steal your car and take it anywhere you know when it's in the middle of a ferry but uh yeah i mean you walk away and you you know use your key fob to lock and arm it because that's just what you always do don't even think about it yeah i remember when we um got married it was in january so it was cold obviously and um we went to harrison hot springs which is just like a little you know tourist trap town to a bed and breakfast for our little honeymoon, just a couple of nights. And um, the air was very humid because it's, you know, near the ocean. And um, my husband discovered that if he pulled his parking brake, it wouldn't release because it would get ice crystals on it and it would freeze. And he actually had to go and like hit it with a hammer <laughs> to get it to release. So he kept saying to himself, okay, I, I shouldn't pull the parking brake. But of course, as soon as we pull and park, he pulled the parking brake without even thinking about it. So then we got a big piece of paper, like stuck it over the parking brake handle. So then, yeah, when he went to grab the parking brake, he would feel the paper. And, oh yeah, right. I shouldn't pull this because yeah, again, it's just such habit, right? It's like, I remember when I was learning to drive and I, so I got in the driver's side and I accidentally almost you know, clawed my husband in the face because I was reaching over for the seatbelt, which is usually on the other side because I'm usually in the passenger side. So I just reached out for it as normally. And then it's like, there was nothing there, just aired. So yeah, <laughs> I almost caught him with my nails. It's like, oops. Yeah, it's just so automatic to reach for it as soon as you get in the car, put the seatbelt on. Oh dear. Man, I remember thinking, seeing and uh, I watched a lot of crime dramas and that's caught people before, right? Because there was one where a guy, he um, he shot somebody with the shotgun and then he wanted to make it look like um, the guy had done it himself, but he'd already ejected the empty cartridge because that's what you do, right? Just automatically. So he picked it up and he put it back in the gun and he set it up, but when he did, he got like a few grains of pollen and some sand inside the shell from it being on the the ground and they found it in there so then they knew it had been ejected from the gun and put back in so that they knew it was staged but yeah because of course the guy without thinking had ejected the shell because <clears throat> he had done it you know a hundred times before that's what you do after you shoot the gun <laughs> so yeah I was thinking that catches us a lot or there was one where a guy he went to all this trouble of he stole somebody's car and used it to run somebody down when there was no, you know, when the guy he was framing had no alibi. 
and it was like he almost committed the perfect crime, except he was like six inches shorter than that guy, and he had moved the seat forward, and he forgot to move it back. So, yeah. That was a giveaway that someone else had driven that car, and not the guy he was trying to frame. Or there was one somebody, again, they, um, they remember to wipe all their fingerprints off the steering wheel, the door, you know, the, um, the seatbelt, all that. Forgot to wipe them off the, uh, the, uh, car adjustment lever. So, yeah, almost got away with it, but those little things we do without thinking consciously about them. Because, yeah, I was reading about brain science and they're saying, like, well, your brain has to rely on shortcuts to do things because if you were having to consciously think about everything that you did, you know, how to walk, to close the door behind you, to turn on the light or whatever, it would be too, it would take up so much processing power, you'd never get anything done. You would be exhausted, right? So yeah, your brain relies on shortcuts of routine of I've done this a million times before. Muscle memory knows what to do without you even consciously thinking about it. And then of course, if somebody's using up a lot of brain energy thinking that, you know, I can't make any mistakes. I have to make sure I can, you know, get away with this crime. Then they're even more likely to do things automatically, I think, without even, yeah, consciously thinking about what they're doing. And then, oh, whoops. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we were at my in-laws. We uh, showed my son um, a goofy movie. So now I have the music stuck in my head. That was one of my favorites when I was uh, his age. I was avoiding catching that thread, but I guess instead I actually wrapped my working thread around that parked thread. Whoops. Okay, let's back up a bit. Oh, 
almost went up too far. Yeah, it's this one. Once again, I have a lot of threads that are very similar, so the grid lines really help me to make sure I am stitching in the right place with the right thread. Yeah, I did that one time where I was working with the threads one big square of 100 away from where I should have been. Yeah, I made a right old mess. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I was not very happy with myself then. Okay, and back up a bit again. Now I'm, this is when I want to pick up this thread. Yeah, I almost picked it up earlier, but that would have been wrong. Kind of go up and down, back and forth. Just as I say, yeah, follow the colors. Yeah, so I was so excited. I got a mention in somebody's uh, somebody's description, and they were saying that they like to watch me. Yay! <laughs> And also that they didn't know how I could come up with so many ideas for a one-sided conversation. It's like, yeah, that's ADHD. <laughs> My brain is never quiet. There are always thoughts in there. Yeah, I kind of never pursued a diagnosis because I've heard of people saying, or I mean medication, because they said that, yeah, it helps them to focus, but that it's so quiet in their head that they feel like their creativity is gone and I'm like yeah I think that's what I would worry about I I, mean, I just can't imagine my brain being any other way so it's always been you know I was really surprised to find out other people don't hear verbalized thoughts in their head because yeah I asked my husband like what language do you think in and because he speaks too fluently and uh, he said I don't think in words I was like really He's like, well, I think in images, I'm like, well, I see images too, but there's almost always words accompanying them. And I said, I know there must be thoughts that aren't because of course you always have times when you want to express yourself and you're going, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? So obviously there's a thought there where I don't have the word attached to it right away. I have to search for it, but yeah, it's just strange to me because I've always got commentary going through my head. Then he asked me what that was like once, so I started like verbalizing everything I thought. And then he's like, "How the heck do you stand that?" It's like, I don't know. Guess it's just what I'm used to. Brains are fascinating. All the different ways they work. Well, I guess I said I'm lucky because I don't have to hold a nine to five job and work the traditional kind of way. I found what works for me. So, yeah, it's all good. Why are there two colors? It's funny, too, because somebody said, yeah, like, you know, the treatment for ADHD, which makes you forget things, is that you must remember to take this medication at the same time every day. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh. Uh, no problem. <laughs> I don't know. 
Maybe one day I'll try it, but at the moment, I'm okay with how things are. Okay, so I think I'm going to call it a day there. Yeah, I need to get up and stretch. I sat in a truck seat for so many hours yesterday. I'm still a little stiff, so I'm going to get up and move around and work some of the stiffness out. So, as usual, um, thank you for joining me today, and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.